Hello and welcome to Rampersham Down. So we're now walking on a triple SI as designated by the body responsible for sites in the UK, Natural England. It's been designated because of the grassland habitat that we're now walking on, which they class as a lowland acid grassland. Until recently, um, we've had sheep grazing on this site, um, but the sheep have had to be taken off because they were losing condition, which shows you how poor this habitat is in terms of nutrients for farm animals. The site has some issues in terms of bracken. Uh, you can see a stand here. Uh, without management, this bracken stand will just increase in, side, in size. It spreads through its roots. Um, so that's an issue that we've got to deal with as part of the management plan with Natural England's agreement. So this is the site of the first study. Uh, the first study was looking at the old panel array. This is the original design um, for this park. This is uh, a pitch of uh, 30 degrees approximately and with a, a height between the ground and the leading edge of the panel which is I think about 800 millimetres. So what we did with the uh, to increase light beneath the panels, to increase light penetration, we raised the leading edge of the panels uh, up to 22 degrees in pitch and, and the height of the leading edge a further 200 mil allowing sheep free access beneath these panels so that they can help us manage the habitat. We also found that by doing that the shadow cast, the, the shaded areas beneath the panels, shifted backwards and gave more light penetration under this area of the array uh, which is arguably the deepest shaded area of the array. The the array itself, four panels high, fairly standard, but you'll notice that um, there's a gap between these panels. Uh, the spacing is not non-standard for ramp uh, because of Rampersham and because of this concern about light levels. So what we introduced um, were these spacing um, se uh, sections throughout, um, effectively allowing direct light penetration straight through to the habitat below that's unique. And in front of us is part of the instrumentation that we've installed. It's been here for nearly 12 months and what we're doing as part of the scientific study is we're analyzing a number of different environmental factors. This is the control out here in the open. There's no shade here um, and we're measuring wind speed through an anemometer. We're measuring uh, photosynthetic active radiation which is the part of the light spectrum that plants use to photosynthesize so the only bit that's important to plants um, and we're also in this meter here we're measuring soil moisture content and soil temperature all of this data is being fed back um, through cables to a central unit a data logger and that data logger is linked wirelessly um, to a router and uh, an IP address where we access that data every week and assimilate it into our study tables, um, graphs, etc. This is a unique experiment. We're not aware of it being done for solar arrays anywhere, uh, in, certainly in the UK and probably in the world. Um, the nearest study we've found to this is in America, but it's not this situation at all. The panel design is such that the rear edge, the, the top of the panels, is easily reachable by somebody on the back of a, a trailer being pulled by a Land Rover, um, or we can use lightweight frames um, that are just the right height uh, to be able to install these panels without damaging or impacting upon the habitat. Let's go and have a look. So here we are under the second row, or between the second and third row, and we have a replication of the meters that you saw out in the open, uh, the control metering. Here we've got three further 
PAR meters measuring that photosynthetic radiation and also under the meter under the leading edge of the panel array is another soil moisture and soil temperature probe and then to the right you can see a further anemometer. So that's the environmental data mo monitoring, the test equipment, but more importantly what we also have here is a set of ecological survey um, quadrats. These are permanent quadrats that have been established by the ecologist and they are being used uh, on an annual basis to identify any trends, changes to the ecology, to the biodiversity um, here on the habitat itself. So those quadrats exist, I think there are 20 of them here, um, and there are some out on the field um, without any shade, and they're, again they're the control experiments. So we're comparing the two types. So these panels are translucent. Um, the previous ones we looked at and the ones that you'll find on most solar sites are opaque. Uh, they have a, a plastic backing and uh, the light penetration through them is almost zero. Uh, the translucent panels are totally different. These are glass on glass panels with the solar cell sandwich in between. And you can see clearly through these, they are translucent. The, the glass isn't tinted, it's clear and this is allowing light to penetrate directly. Um, we've also got some spacing uh, at, on the vertical. We've repeated the horizontal spacing as well that were present on the old panel arrays. Also in terms of these panel arrays, uh, from a maintenance perspective, because they're lower at the back, uh, it's easier to bring a lightweight frame in to maintain them. If a panel breaks and we need to replace it, we can just bring in a lightweight frame it won't impact the habitat below, uh, it's fairly light touch. Another aspect about this panel array at Rampersham is the spacing between the rows. The spacing between the rows is, is generous. Um, most solar parks now have a spacing of about two to two and a half meters between rows. Uh, here at Rampersham, the spacing is about four meters, which is beneficial to the habitat in terms of light penetration. So here we are, a, a row of piles. Uh, they're a very low impact. The cross-sectional area is very small. Um, they're driven in like you would a tent peg. And um, the panel array is then bolted to it. So at Rampersham, within the ground, uh, are many, many concrete structures, relics of when cables were being distributed all over the site. Um, and that makes it a health and safety um, hazard and um, also very difficult to remove and very costly and would have severe impacts on the habitat uh, in removing them.